POC Network here with another unboxing, this time coming from XGIMI, or X-G-I-M-I. -I. And we've covered a number of their projectors in the past, uh, anywhere's, uh, any, or anything from the Halo to the Halo Plus to some of the others that have been really good. And feature options like autofocus, auto, focus, auto uh, alignment, auto keystone, and object avoidance. If only other things in life offered that. But this right here is kind of the granddaddy of them all, or at least one of their flagship models. And this is the Horizon Pro. And it is a 4K HDR10 projector with HLG or technology support. And of course, Android 10. And that's pretty much what you get. Well, actually it's 4K upgrade of all their other projectors, but it, Android is what you get with all of the company's projectors, which allows you to boot straight into an operating system that doesn't require you to have the projector connected to anything. So no laptops needed, although you can plug in a laptop, no DVD players or Xboxes needed, although you can plug all that stuff into it. And on top of that, it also has Chromecast support built into it, so you can cast from any Android device to it wirelessly if you wanna cast from your device. So the biggest thing that really sets it apart, again, is the fact that this is 4K with HDR. And it has 2200 ANSI lumens, so it's brighter than the Halo and the Halo Plus. And since the Halo Plus is a fantastic portable projector, I'm guessing that this one is just as fantastic. I mean, you might as well continue the pattern. So this is a 4K version of all those other projectors. So it has Android built into it. So you can, as long as you have Wi-Fi at least, you can stream all of your content that you want off of YouTube or, or some of the other streaming options like Hulu or, or Amazon Video and, uh, and even Netflix. It's cool because you can take it anywhere, just plug it in, and as long as you have Wi-Fi, you're ready to go. Uh, especially if you have options like Plex, so you can take your entire media library with you at any time or anywhere. Again, as long as you have Wi-Fi. So again, 2200 ANSI lumens. It also has two 8-watt speakers inside, which of course are Harman Kardon speakers, not just your typical speakers. They are designed by Harman Kardon, and or at least signed off by them, going, yeah, we put our name on there. So you know it's going to sound a lot better than some of your typical projectors with built-in speakers that usually sound like, well, I'll, I'll, I'll behave and not fill in the blank right there, but you can fill that blank in with any, anything that's on your mind. These don't sound like blank. They should sound pretty good. And of course, with it, you get that auto keystone, auto alignment, auto focus, and object avoidance. And what that means is you turn it on, point it at the wall, and it automatically will focus. It'll keystone it to give you the perfect, you know, view. I was going to say rectangle, but it depends on the aspect ratio of whatever you're feeding it. But it will you know, if you're watching a movie in 16-9 ratio, it's going to give you the perfect 16-9 ratio with no weird, you know, tilting anywhere or, or anything that could be caused by the direction in which you're pointing the projector at the wall at. You know, so if, you, if you're a little cockeyed like this, it's going to fix it and align it on the wall for you. And uh, the object avoidance, that's, that's the cool part. If you have pictures on the wall or anything like that, it's going to look for the biggest amount of space within the area you're pointing it at and size it down and fit it into that space all by turning it on and pointing it at the wall. So very little interaction with from the user or any kind of maintenance. You just turn it on, point at the wall, or point at the wall, turn it on, and start browsing for what you wanna watch. Now, of course, again, you can plug anything you want into it, Xbox, Blu-ray, any of that, uh, just like you could any other projector. It features an XView 2.0 image engine, and uh, of course, because it has Google Assistant, uh, or excuse me, because it has Google TV, you get Google Assistant, as well as I mentioned, uh, like I mentioned, Chromecast uh, built into it. And it can, it, or it's capable of providing anywhere between a 40 inch and a 200 inch image on wall or screen or anything you're pointing it at. And with 2200 lumens at 200 inches, it's gonna look a lot better than the Halo Plus and some of the other projectors that this company has delivered upon the world. So this is going to look brighter and better because it's brighter and 4K. HDR 4K. And of course, latency. A lot of projectors have latency issues. That's why we don't use projectors to play games with. And even this one, this one has a low latency. So it, it offers as little as 35 milliseconds latency if you enable game mode. Of course, game mode, you reduce some little things here and there to be able to get that latency. So you might sacrifice a little bit on quality in order to get the data to your eyes faster as it's bouncing off the screen or wall and back into your eyes. Still not comparable to some of the nicer TVs that have game modes themselves. So again, if you're playing a competitive game, like a, you know, a first person shooter or anything 
everything else online that every little millisecond counts. You're not gonna wanna use a projector, even this one. However, if you're just playing a campaign mode or just having fun, you can play it on this projector. And of course, thanks to modern project, project, projection technology, it has up to 30,000 lamp life hours before it goes kaput and you gotta buy a new projector because I don't, the, the lens isn't, it's not interchangeable, not interchangeable. So it is definitely the projector that needs to be replaced, but 30,000 hours is going to be a very, very long time. Trust me, I have a theater in my house and it has a DLP projector that's uh, a very nice Epson, one of their, uh, well, it was a flagship like 10 years ago. And uh, I'm about ready to change the bulb on it. Uh, but that bulb life was only like 2,000 or 2,500 hours. So compare that to 30,000, you're gonna be doing pretty good with this. This is going to outlive your interest because by the time this fills, as long as it does live up to its our promise, you're probably gonna want another projector already. And you're probably gonna buy a new projector before that even happens, so, you know, cause by then you're gonna have 8K, 12K, whatever. So, and as for the resources inside, it has 32 gigs of space for all the apps that you wanna download onto it for your streaming pleasures, and two gigs of memory, which should be perfectly fine for a projector running Android TV. And then it also offers Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Wi-Fi, it does its dual band, so it's 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, and Bluetooth is Bluetooth 5.0, which should get you some pretty good audio because you can also use this as a Bluetooth speaker, not just a projector. So if, it's, if you're nearby and just wanna listen to some tunes on those nice eight watt Harman Kardon speakers, you can Bluetooth from your phone and listen to that awesome audio. So what we're gonna do today, uh, after that long introduction, and we should hopefully have chapters and everything in this video, so you can skip my boring speech there if you want to and just go straight to what it looks like. So if you wanna do that, you know, just, just take a look at those chapters that are in the timeline there and or in the description of the video. But what we're gonna do is the next part of this video is we're gonna open this up. We're gonna do that unboxing. We're gonna see what it looks like, what it comes with, what's inside the box, and then a little bit later on in the video, you're gonna see what it actually looks like when it's being used in a theater environment in one of our demo rooms. But let's go ahead and take a look at it. As I just put my hands all over the lens, this is the projector. Now keep in mind, 4K projector, if you compare that to any modern flagship projector, uh, I mean, this is small, this is really small. Now it's not gonna look like, you know, if Epson comes out with their flag, actually they have, obviously they've come out with a number now of flagship models, uh, although only a few of them have been worthwhile, but, uh, you know, th those are gonna be a little bit better than this, a lot better than this, but they're also twice the price and bulkier and yeah, a lot, lot more involved. This is more about footprint. It's more about ultra modern, tiny, you know, simple setups that can provide a lot of power. You know, so it's small, it's mostly light and weight, uh, and it looks great. And you have, of course, Harman Kardon branding on the sides here because, you know, you have your two speakers, the eight watts on each side, eight watts, eight watts. And uh, it's a mostly gray uh, kind of theme. This actually kind of looks like, if I had to compare it to anything, the Halo Plus or Halo. But the Halo Plus, we'll just keep saying Halo Plus because it's better anyway. Uh, it's kind of a similar design, only bigger. It's a bigger square and shorter. And you have a mesh grill on both sides where those speakers are. You have a mesh pattern going across the front here. You have your lens, you have your sensor here. And you on the, on the back, you have all your connectivity options. You have your power input. You have your optical out for audio to a, you know, an external AVR or other, or a sound bar or anything else that takes optical. You have two USB ports. You have two HDMI point, uh, ports, points, <laughs> and HDMI ports, one of which uh, supports ARC. And then you have a gigabit ethernet port and an analog audio out. So that's gonna be your alternative option for sending audio to a, an external solution uh, if you're just sending it to a basic analog stereo solution. So for your three output options for audio, you have that 3.5 millimeter, you have that 5.1 optical, or you have up to 7.1 with the HDMI arc shared with a receiver. And then on the top, you have your options here. You, you have a power button, you have a play pause button here, and you have your volume up and down. So let's continue on into the box and see what else we have. You have power. And that is a massive, impressive looking brick right there. No problem though, since 
you know, this isn't a portable unit. It is just a, a unit that you'd install somewhere in the home. That was supposed to be on top, apparently. Ours isn't a brand, brand new unit, so it might have had some hands on it already, or maybe one of us has already opened it. Hard to say for sure. And the instructions are definitely brand new. Uh, this is your user guide and just walks you through via multiple different languages and how to use the device. There's a total of 12 pages per language. 12, <laughs> I like that, 12 and 12. 12 pages per language and 12 languages to choose from. Everything from, well, I'm not gonna name all those off, but it pretty much covers the globe. And it looks like you have no cables with this one, so for HDMI or anything else, you're gonna have to provide your own cables. Yep. But you do get this awesome remote. Now this remote is an upgrade from some of their others. Their, their other ones just have a basic plastic remote. This one actually has an aluminum shell to it, which is kinda cool, except for this, which is plastic, the black portion here. But all this silver, this is an aluminum shell, and it looks really nice and feels great in the hand. It has a little extra weight to it. You have all of your buttons here. You have your power button. You have your settings button to get into the settings menu. You have your Google Assistant button. You have a directional pad here with an OK button in the center. You have a back button. You have a menu button, which is just a quick menu. And then you have your home button to get straight back to the home screen in Android TV. And then you have your volume up and down on the remote. But again, it looks really nice and feels great in the hand. And uh, in order to get to the battery compartment, you just push this little button here and a little, this cool little tray pops out, which shows you you need two AAA batteries in order to get this to work, which apparently it does not come with AAA batteries, unfortunately. That's always something we kind of like, you know, mm, stick our nose up at a little bit, you know, and when you're spending a lot of money on a projector, the least you can do is at least provide the batteries. Even if they're generic, it's, it's remote, you know, it's, it doesn't need the best batteries in the world. It just needs batteries that work and they'll probably still work for a decent amount of time, even with generics, but whatever, I guess we have high standards, <laughs> but here it is. This is the Horizon Pro projector and all of this for an MSRP of $1,899. Now, I believe that MSRP was a little bit more at first, and I think $1,899 is kind of like the current MSRP for it because they kind of priced it to be a little bit more fitting with what else is out there. Because at anything more than that, you're really getting dangerously close to some of these fancier new laser ultra short throw projectors and other options out there in the market, and and some of those options, like uh, I spoke of from Epson, eventually they're gonna start dropping in price and getting to you know a more reasonable value. And once you cross 2000 with something like this, you start to get closer to those projectors as, as they devalue a little bit. And then, it, you know, mm. So you gotta be able to price it at a decent place. So 1899, so far sounds kind of good for this. Uh, again, we haven't shown it off yet. I personally haven't seen what it looks like and we're about to do that in just a moment. So $1,899, a 2200 ANSI Lumen projector, 4K, HDR, HLG, <sighs> sounds pretty good. So of course, what does it look like? All right, I guess we'll get to that. So let's go take a look. We're gonna shoot it at one of our demo theaters to see what we can get out of this. Okay, we have this set up in one of our demo theaters. We're gonna turn on the projector. And hopefully, since it's shooting up and off to the ceiling, it's gonna be able to identify the screen and squeeze everything into it, or at least create a viewable image on the screen, but it might take a, a moment. So far, focus looks pretty good. And keeping in mind, this is the first time we've turned on this projector, so the remote hasn't been synced to the projector yet. So it still has a few things to accomplish. And what it's doing here is it's telling us that we need to sync the remote to the projector by holding those two buttons together, the back and the home button. And this triggers a pairing mode in the remote, which allows it to pair to the projector so that you can continue. Here, you're just gonna pick your language. You can't really see it right now, it's off the screen. We're gonna pick English. And cook yourself your TV with your Android phone. We're gonna skip. And it's gonna connect you to your Wi-Fi. Uh, we just chose a Wi-Fi network and we're pushing through to have it do whatever it needs to do. Right now it's saying, please wait. You cannot see that on the screen because it's kind of up and above the screen right now and on the ceiling, or at least the wall above the screen and on the ceiling. And make the most out of your TV. Discover apps, yada, 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 by signing in. Of course, you're gonna have to sign in. 
And we got past signing into Android, or your Google account to access Android TV with, excuse me. Get better voice control of yours with can Google Assistant. It tells you how to do that. And search across all your TV apps, blah, blah, blah. Do this, allow Google to share across with your TV apps, blah, 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 blah. We're gonna say no thanks for now. Uh, a few things you should know. Services and your privacy, we're gonna continue so we can adjust some of your privacy if you wanna go into that. Uh, get the most out of your Google Assistant. Stay up to date with emails and the latest features. We'll say no for now. Okay. And it's giving us a little bit of an introduction. But we'll skip past this. What's the forecast for today? There's a and from here, we're going to be able to choose some of the options that we want on here. We're going to say, okay, yeah, Pandora, maybe. Uh, VLC, sure. Netflix, sure. It looks like YouTube installs by default. You got Kodi and Plex and everything. Of course, you're going to want some Plex in there. Let's go back and add some Plex. Gotta show love for Plex, one of the best home media server solutions out there. And we're just gonna hit next. We're gonna let it do, let it do its thing. It's gonna walk through us or walk us through some of the options and features. You can use Google Assistant. You can do all sorts of, of options on being able to, uh, or, or you have different ways of being able to access the content on this projector. Right now, this is actually just a tutorial. I was hoping that was actually gonna trigger these options, but no. From here, we're gonna click the settings button. Uh, this is the autofocus button, which is also something I forgot to mention when I was talking about the remote features. The autofocus button is at the very bottom of all the buttons on the remote. So if you were looking at the image on, images on the screen that we just had as I was talking about it, you would have noticed that extra button that I skipped over. That's what that does. So I'm going into settings. I'm going to go to keystone correction and keystone settings. We're going to go to auto keystone on startup. Yes. Uh, auto keystone correction. Uh, and we're gonna have auto obstacle avoidance enabled. And we're going to trigger it now. And it definitely worked. Unfortunately, it did not fill the whole screen up, but it did work. Thankfully though, that does get us a pretty decent size image right there, or at least uh, a very well auto keystone image uh, with very little manual correction involved and uh, gets us what we want to see uh, for the moment. Of course, this probably has to do with the fact that it is so far away from the screen because it is, again, around 18 feet from the screen. So maybe it's having a hard time, the sensor's having a hard time seeing the screen. Maybe we got to start this off with the lights on or whatnot. But for now, we'll just center our focus on uh, the image on the screen here. Uh, but uh, so far, what we're looking at here is a fantastic image. I mean, it, the color detail uh, on everything is spot on, uh, something you'd expect for an expensive 4K projector. And uh, I'm very happy to see this because like if you have any muddy, muddy colors or faded colors or anything on a projector at, at this price, you know, it just wouldn't work out so well. And you see that with some of the knockoff 4K ultra short for throws, sometimes the, the image really isn't that great. It's kind of hit and miss on some of those options out there. But thankfully, that is not the case on this one. The colors are absolutely fantastic. In fact, let's take a look at this guy here. And we're going to take the volume down so that we don't get hit with any copyright issues. Uh, but what we have here is a fantastic video of some birds and other things that are very colorful to really show what this projector can do. Now, of course, we may not get a perfect representation of what we're seeing with our own eyes on the screen uh, that you're seeing because of the camera isn't always perfect. Uh, every change in detail on and lighting in the room, how bright the screen is and everything is going to affect the settings we have on the camera here. So we kind of set it to a general default so that way we can pretty much capture a general idea of what we're seeing seeing uh, without having to constantly mess with the settings. But again, the colors are absolutely fantastic. The clarity is fantastic. Everything is absolutely fantastic about this image. Everything looks good. This bird is just the, the detail in the feathers, the edges, everything. And back on the, the Android TV screen, the text, thumbnails, everything is so clear and crisp. Edges, everything is exactly where you'd want it to be with a 4K projector with HDR. But yes, these, these images are fantastic. Bounce to something else here, which is 4K HDR. Uh, a really good opportunity maybe for testing the color accuracies and or just the brightness, the, the 
depth that we get out of some of these colors. Now this looks fantastic. Of course, uh, this is not going to compare well to something like an OLED TV, but uh, brightness for a projector at this price, uh, 4K and all these features added into it, I mean, this is pretty good. Uh, we do like to see a little bit more uh, in brightness, uh, around 2800 uh, for 4K to really s get the most out of it when you want to compare it to LED TVs, uh, especially getting closer to OLED as long as it has really, really rich deep blacks. Now the blacks on this is pretty good, or they are pretty good. Uh, they aren't terrible. Uh, you do see there, there is a little brightness to the screen in the blacks, but it's it's not distracting. And again, it is a projector, so you're not going to get the comparison that, you, that if you put it side by side to an OLED screen, that is going to be perfect blacks. In this case, you have light shining off the surface and coming back to your eyes, so there is going to be a brightness to your blacks that are is beyond perfect black, since light versus no light projector versus OLED. For 2200 lumens, this is pretty good, especially if we were to blow this up to, as you could see earlier, <laughs> how big that image was, even at 200 inches, uh, it's fantastic. And also, which I just now realized, we're shooting up a little high right now. That also would have contributed to why it didn't capture the full screen. So if I were to adjust this slightly without ruining everything, and point it down like that, uh, now we're going to go back into the menu and see if it'll re-keystone. There we go. Now we're filling most of the image, or most of the screen. We'll see if we'll capture a bigger... There we go. That is much better right there. So, adjusting the camera here so that you can see this better. That did a much better job at acquiring the full size of the projection screen or close to it. And again, this is 150 inch uh, screen. So it is a pretty large surface to project against. And despite that, this looks great. So now we have a much better image, much bigger image. Now we're gonna go back to, uh, actually we'll try, let's see. Let's look at world's best cities. And again, all this content is coming off of YouTube. And wow, did that get a lot brighter because of a bigger, image area so there's a lot more light reflecting back at you this is huge the picture the image looks amazing and if i were to compare this to something like the flagship epson that i have at home and we actually have a similar model here in fact that's just one generation different from the one that i have uh, this actually takes it on pretty well now the epson has darker blacks i'll give it i'll give them that but the brightness of this at 2200 compared to the Epsons that are about 2300 to 2700 I believe. This actually compares very well to those and or has better brightness. And I mean just wow. Uh, there are there is some jitter in some of the smaller detail uh, moving around or the, as the image moves around but that actually could be the video itself. It may not be from the projector but this looks just so great now you can see i don't know if the camera's picking up that building that was off to the left there it had some jitter and some of the texture of the building uh, so again that could be the video it may not be the projector but this looks great again very comparable to the epson flagships uh, that uh, I was mentioning earlier, uh, the one I have at home. Uh, it was a fantastic 1080p projector in its time, and the clarity of this image blows it away in terms of 4K versus 1080p. This is absolutely noticeable. The colors just really pop. Uh, if I had a choice between the two projectors for watching a movie, I would definitely choose this one hands down. Of course, keep in mind, if you compare it side by side with one of Epson's flagship, or now new 4, 4K flagships, you probably will lean towards the Epson, but again, those are about you know twice the price, closer to about four to five, even six thousand dollars for some of those models. I think if we point it a little bit further down and try to do the auto keystone with the lights on, it'll be able to better see the black border running on the screen, and be it probably feel a lot more confident in trying to fit its picture within the space because the Halo and the Halo Plus, or at least the Halo Plus specifically, uh, we've taken that around many times and tested it, uh, or used it for testing other diff various different devices and or, or technology or media content we come across. And we shoot it at pop-up screens that we use all the time, tripod screens and whatnot. And it captures with the lights on the frame flawlessly and puts the image right within the white space 
just as you would manually and it blows our mind every time. So I have absolutely no doubt that this will do exactly the same thing. So there you have it. Again, this is the XJimmy Horizon Pro 4K projector for $1,899. What did you think? Uh, is this something that you might be interested in? Yeah, I mean, use the comments below and let us know. How does this compare to your own expectations of a good 4K projector of its size and options? So use the comments, let us know what you think. And of course, we're gonna have a full review about this later on at pocnetwork.net once we've given a little bit more time at testing it out. Uh, so we know for sure what we think about it, what we like, what we don't like, but we definitely wanna hear your own opinions as well. So definitely use the description, or the, excuse me, the comments section below to leave those remarks and or questions for each other, the company maybe in case they're watching and or us. And of course, in the description, we're gonna have a link to that review at POC Network, as well as some other information, including where you can find this projector. So we'll have plenty of links and options so that you can get the best deal because there is, I believe, a sale going on at this very time for this unit. So definitely take a look at all the links and see what the best price is before you buy so you can save yourself a little bit of hard-earned cash. And again, the description has all of that information. Use the comment section below to share your own thoughts. And if you liked what you've seen here, don't forget to subscribe and follow us and like the video as well. Let us know you like the video by ticking that like button and ticking that bell to subscribe to us so that you can follow all the videos that we have to come or just take a look at all the other ones we've done in the past. So there you have it. Description, like, subscribe, comment section. And as always, we thank you for watching and we'll catch you next time. If you wanna stay on top of all the latest and greatest and or at least the gadgets we cover, Remember to subscribe right here. Subscription button, click it. You're gonna want to. There's lots of videos, interviews, previews, all sorts of stuff. Button, click it.